everyone, welcome back to the ninth episode of Sewing 101. In this episode, I'll be showing you how to properly sew a button and how to make buttonholes. You'll be learning how to sew a button properly so the fabric doesn't rip, the button doesn't come off, and it's secure, intact, and fast and easy. Sometimes when I see tutorials on people threading their needle and sitting there tying a knot like forever, it just makes me cringe. So if you know anyone that takes forever to tie their little knot at the end of their needle, then send them this video so they can learn how to do it fast and easy. If you're new to my channel, I have a Sewing 101 series where I teach you how to sew basic items. I have an episode on learning how to sew straight lines, how to use a sewing machine, how to sew a clean finish hem, and a zipper, and some other little fun stuff. So if you haven't already, you can check them out so you can learn how to sew and you can make my DIY projects. I guess you can call this Season 2 of the Sewing 101 series because it's been a year since I've uploaded Episode 8. So if you'd like to check out the other episodes from this Sewing 101 series, you can check the playlist link in the description box. Let's get started! Put your thread to your needle about 10 inches long folded in half. Take the end of the thread and wrap it around your finger about 3 times, then push it down the end of your finger and pull. And now you got a knot that took you less than 3 seconds to do. If your knot is too big, you can always trim half of it down. When you put your needle through the fabric, make sure the knot is on the right side of the fabric. Yes, the right side. <laughs> Place the needle back to the top and put it through one of the holes on the button. Put the needle in the hole across from it and down through the fabric. To sew your button properly, make sure you leave about half an inch of thread in between the button and the fabric. You can use an eraser from a mechanical pencil to put under the button to help you prevent you from sewing the button tightly. Four loops through the button is good enough. After that, place the needle through the fabric under the button. This is when the extra thread in between the button and the fabric comes in place. Wrap the thread under the button about 3 times. Now put the needle through a couple of threads under the button and tie 2 knots. If you're sewing the button on fabric that has two layers, put the needle in through both layers and pull it through about half an inch away. Check the back side to make sure the needle stays in between both layers. Much better! Leaving a tail of thread in between the fabric will prevent the knot from coming undone in the future. Your button should have a little bit of free play. If your button is on too tight, it'll cause friction when putting it through the buttonhole, causing it to eventually rip the fabric. This next button has a shank and it's pretty simple to sew, just like the other button. Fold your thread in half and put it through the needle hole and make your knot the same way as you did before. Place the needle through so the knot is on the right side of the fabric. Put the needle through the buttonhole at least 4 times. When sewing a button with a shank, you don't need to leave extra thread or wrap it around like you did with the other one. Sew it tight, but not too tight. Now tie your two knots and leave a tail in between the fabric. Now you got yourself a nice sewn button. Time for buttonholes 101. <laughs> You'll need a buttonhole presser foot. It usually comes with your sewing machine. Place your button inside the button holder. If you only have one kind of button, make sure you do the buttonhole first, then sew the button. Place your buttonhole lever down and make sure it stays inside the gap. And have your two threads sticking out under the presser foot. My sewing machine comes with five different buttonholes. 
Mark where you want the buttonhole to be. This will be the bottom of the buttonhole. Place it under the presser foot and make sure the needle falls right under where your marking is. With my machine, all I need to do is press start and it'll make the buttonhole for me and I don't need to press the pedal. Now we just watch the sewing machine do all the work for us. And it'll stop on its own as soon as it's done. Here you can see the buttonhole is right on the marking we made and now just cut off the excess threads. Now use a seam ripper to cut up the inside of the buttonhole, making sure not to cut any of the threads. Now to put it to the test. Perfect! Unlike the first button I sewed, this is a perfect example of free play. This square buttonhole is good for medium to heavier weight fabrics. This buttonhole is square on one side and rounded on the other side, and this one's also good for medium to heavy weight fabrics. This buttonhole is rounded on both ends and it's good for lightweight fabrics and it creates a delicate look for your garment. This one is called the key buttonhole and it's made for buttons with shanks and they're usually on jackets and coats because of their heavier fabrics. This is a pointed key buttonhole and it's perfect for heavyweight fabrics and also good for buttons with shanks and tacks that are used on jeans. I hope you found this video really helpful and make sure to check out the other videos in this series if you haven't already. Subscribe and thumbs up this video. Thanks for watching.